The book is a travelogue in space and a travelogue in time. It's a memoir about me and Germany and it's a memoir about my parents and Germany. And it's a mystery because really there are many questions that I had after my mother died about her and her past that had not been answered and that I was looking for solutions to. This is how the book began, uh, begins and this is really where my awareness that I had to write a book about Germany began on a train. I am on a train heading into Magdeburg in eastern Germany, about two hours southwest of Berlin. Sixty-one years ago, my late mother was on a very different sort of train, headed for the same city. Hers did not have a dining car. Hers did not have a changing electronic display updating the train's speed and distance from its next station. She was one of 300 Jewish women internees being transported in sealed and stinking cattle cars from the concentration camp of Stutthof on the Baltic coast, 21 miles from Danzig. In Magdeburg, she would be a slave laborer for over a year at Poltefabrik, Germany's largest munitions plant. The factory was the scene of countless accidents, and every night my mother would dream of her fingers being cut off. Those dreams haunted her many years after her liberation by the Allies. They haunt me as I look down at my middle-aged hands, I have come to do a very different kind of work. I'm on a hectic two-week book tour scheduled to speak about and read from my novel, The German Money, Das Deutsche Geld, the story of a Holocaust survivor's adult children who are arguing about their dead mother's will. The title, The German Money, refers to German reparations paid to the survivor in the novel. Now, not all survivors did so, but my parents applied for reparations from the German government to Holocaust survivors. And because they were never well off, the monthly checks made some real difference in their lives. Did they resent that? They never said. Though my mother hated the word for reparations itself, how, she said, how could you make things good again? Me, I found it puzzling and even embarrassing that my, that my parents took this money at all, given how they felt about Germany. And when the monthly checks came, I stared at the envelopes with repulsion and fascination. Now, as my train nears the station, it hits me that this entrance into Magdeburg could not be any more American. My mother was a slave, considered subhuman by the very people whose language she spoke so perfectly that it might have saved her life. She survived. She immigrated to the U.S. She gave birth to me in the world's freest country. And now, I'm returning to the scene of her brutal imprisonment as a successful American author with two more books scheduled to be published in Germany after this one. And not just any American author, but a pioneer in writing about the children of Holocaust survivors who's been publishing on the subject longer than any other American writer. My mother was brought here to Magdeburg against her will while well, I have made the choice to come. To come to Germany, the country I had sworn never to visit. Growing up, I didn't just think of Germany as a graveyard. It was a gigantic thieves' warehouse. I had read in Holocaust histories of the massive European-wide plunder of the Jewish people as they became enslaved and slaughtered. Nazis didn't merely confiscate shops, businesses, factories, apartments, homes, gold, jewels, money, artwork. 
They also snatched up pianos, furniture, silverware, fur coats, candelabras, household goods, mattresses, clothing, whatever they could, wherever it lay. So anywhere I turned in that country, I might be facing something that had belonged to a murdered relative of mine, and I wouldn't know it. Germany was likewise the country whose products I could never buy. The country that was so alien and radioactive that when I was a child, I used to imagine my maps of Europe without it. As if I were a superhero whose laser gaze could slice it away from the continent and it would sink without a trace which would leave Switzerland and Austria with the sea coast, and I had lots of fun imagining that. But I would also have revenge for the camps and the killing squads that not only murdered dozens of my parents' relatives, but also poisoned their memories. Talking about their lost parents, cousins, aunts, and uncles was so painful for my own parents that I have, in middle age, no family tree to climb, no names and professions and cities to study, to explore, to wonder at. Yet here I am, in Magdeburg, going over an introduction that a German-speaking friend has helped me to write. It seems only polite to break the ice with my audiences by speaking some German, and I'm enjoying people's reaction as the tour progresses. Surprised that an American would even attempt to speak German, an enjoyment that I have done so correctly with a decent accent. I've come here in strength, not weakness. I feel anxious, but I feel prepared. The bookstore is affiliated with the Protestant cathedral a block away, and it is packed before I begin, with at least 40 people looking interested and attentive. It's warm, and at times I feel compelled to do a better reading than I have ever done before, because not so very far away from where I am standing, my mother was an utterly expendable cog in the Nazi war machine. My book is a challenge to that. People, insight, literature, these things count. When I'm done, the questions come slowly. And while I understand some of the German, at times a fog of comprehension sweeps over me and I have to wait for the translation. Is it German fatigue? Too much time immersed in a language not my own? Or is it something else that's making me feel dizzy? The audience wants to know a great deal. The audience wants to know everything. How long did the book take to write? How much is autobiographical? Can I say more about my mother's experiences in Magdeburg? How about my experiences in Magdeburg? What do I think of it? Would I come back? How much did my parents talk about their war years? On and on and on. And then, a soft voice question from a man in the front row. He asks me, do you think forgiveness is possible? Well, I start with my mother, who told me that she never blamed all Germans and that younger Germans surely had nothing to do with events before their birth. He says, yes, but that's her. What do you think? Forgiveness, I ask. Of course it's possible. If not, I wouldn't be here. And I think I mean it when I say it. But actually, the idea has never occurred to me before. I am not in Germany to forgive anyone. I am in Germany to explore what has always been taboo and terrifying to me, to face my demons. When the long evening ends with applause and some announcements, the effusive bookstore owner, who speaks not a word of English, presses gifts on me, books about Magdeburg, bottles of local liqueurs. Exhausted and humbled, 
All I can think of is the ending of William Faulkner's novel, Light in August. My, my, a body does get around. Thank you.